everyone, it's Julia and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a sweatshirt makeover for you. This is going to be a very simple design, um, but I hope you learned something. I do have a summer shop up here in Minnesota and because we go through the 4th of July month, I do like to have some patriotic things and so this is going to be a patriotic theme. I am going to be using one of my clay covered buttons on it as well. I did this in the last video and I'll link that down below if you missed that video. It's kind of a fun little technique to do with some of your buttons. Um, this first of all I wanted just to, to share a little bit about the sweatshirts that I use. Um, they are the, the comfort colored sweatshirts. They are pigment dyed really a broken in, just lived in, really soft um, sweatshirt. 80% cotton, 20% polyester. I'm going to link down below for you my supplier. I've got a couple of them. I'll link both of them for you. Um, this is, like I said, it is a, a, a comfort color and it's style 1566. I'll also link um, another site. Amazon also sells them. If you just wanted to get one, um, use the Amazon. If you wanted to do this for a craft show or something similar, I would recommend getting a supplier. It's just a little bit less expensive. Um, I hope you enjoy this everybody. Let's get started. I am using this clay covered button. It has an imprint of a star on it and I thought that would um, work well for this patriotic sweatshirt. I'm just placing this ruler in between the layers here just to protect the bottom layer of this sweatshirt. I'm going to be doing some stenciling getting this nice and tidy and laid out. Now I'm using a flag stencil that I picked up at Tuesday morning. This particular one's been discontinued, but I will link down below all my supplies. And I did find some great flag stencils on Amazon. So you can take a look at those if you want to do a patriotic sweatshirt. I'm just using a craft acrylic white paint, and then I'm using a fabric medium. Just have a plate here that I'm going to be putting a little bit of that paint on. I'm not going to need much at all. Um, you don't use much paint when you stencil on fabric. And then I am just putting a squirt of this uh, fabric medium, about the same amount of fabric medium as paint. I'm just going to be stirring that up and combining it. Now I do have my um, stencil brush and just a paper towel there and I take some of that paint off on the paper towel and then I usually start my pouncing on the stencil that's are off you know off the design you can see me just do some pouncing off of the design and then I go over the design you don't need much paint at all and this helps prevent getting too much just a real dry paintbrush that you're using and then once it's dry you do heat set this fabric medium and that's going to get that paint right into the fibers and it'll be much more washable now some de deconstruction. I'm cutting the band off right above that seam. And then I want to cut that seam off as well. And this is going to be the drawstring in my sweatshirt. Just giving that drawstring a little bit of a pull just to, to pull it out a little bit. And then I'm going to set that band aside. I do make um, different things with my bands and my cuffs and I one of the things is my fingerless mittens and I'll also I've done a uh, video on that I'll link that as well. I'm doing an asymmetrical cut at the neckline I just drew a couple marks so I knew what I, where I wanted to, to draw that and this is going to be folded over. I also want to cut some of the bottom sleeve off been kind of getting into three-quarter length sleeves, especially for my summer shop. It just um, makes a nice, comfortable sweatshirt for the summer. Cutting about approximately six inches off. And again, we'll be saving that piece. I do use these in my fingerless mittens. I have a piece of, of red fabric that I'm going to be using. Um, and it's not a bright red, more of a vintage red, I would say. Um, I'm going to be using my fast turns to make some fabric tubes. The fabric tubes or the fast turns have a chart in so you know exactly where what to cut and what. But the ones that I'm going to be using, I'm cutting at a quarter, an inch and a half for my strip. 
These fast turns, I've had mine for several years and they are an investment, but if you do a lot of sewing and I, I make a lot of cuffs using these as well. And I'm gonna have an upcoming video on um, how I'm, I make, I've, I've had one once before, but I've, I've done some different, um, just a different way with making my cuffs using this fast turn. Again, I'm folding this fabric now. I'm just taking a quarter of an inch seam allowance and just forming this um, tube. So my right sides are together. Now sticking that correct cylinder in there. And again, that chart will tell you what cylinder to use. And then you have this wire thing that you stick in there. And then you fold over the top. Um, and then you just screw that little, it's got a little corkscrew on the, on the, on the bot end of it. And then you can just pull that, that right on through. Really easy way to make piping as well. This is just a really neat tool. And I'm going to be just forming a loop with this to go around my button. I have several of these sweatshirts to make. That's why I made that tube um, longer than I need for this particular sweatshirt. Just cutting that off now, I need about four inches or so. And that's just gonna get tucked underneath. I'm off screen, sorry about that, but it's gonna get tucked underneath that little flap. There we go. And you'll see, it's gonna get sewn into place and then I'm just gonna have my button um, underneath it. And now onto that bottom or that drawstring. I'm finding the center of my band, the center front, putting a pin there. And then I don't know if you saw it or not, but I had a little rectangle piece of red. I do have heat and bond light on the back side of this. This piece measures about one inch by two inches. And I'm going to be placing it on the wrong side of my sweatshirt, right over that pin so I have it centered. I'm just gonna pr be pressing that into place. And removing the pin. And then marking two, two little circles there. And we'll be punching those with my crop dial Just punching right through the fabric and, and right through the sweatshirt. There's always that little bit of fabric that needs to be clipped off the back side when you use this crop -a dial on fabric. But it's a great way to, to, to get holes. And this is the large hole, I think it's three, a 3 16th inch. I'm at my sewing machine and I've got my free motion foot on and my feed dogs dropped. And I'm gonna be going just around, around and around in a circle. I'm just, in, just making that um, little hole there more secure. You can see there what I'm doing, just going around and around, it's an organic look. You can also put a grommet in there, I suppose, but I just find this to be very simple. Also just edge stitching this, going back and forth, just to get that little piece of red fabric into place. And now I've got my drawstring in. I'm just forming, just pulling that through and tying a knot. I like to add my drawstring in it when I sew my um, bottom up. Then I don't have to go through and try to string, string it through later. I just sew it all in one, one step. Putting some pins in there and I'm gonna be just edge stitching this and edge stitching around the sleeves and also this, this front or this top, this neckline. And I use, I'll show you at my sewing machine, but I do use um, an applique stitch for this. It works really well. Just kind of edge finishes it all and, and makes it have a neat finish to it. Now I'm at my sewing machine and you can see the stitch that I'm using. I, I'm at the neckline right now and I'm going 
it's just straight on down and then I'm going to pivot at this bottom and then sew right on up and including that that little fabric loop there for the button and you can see it there and now I'm at the sleeve and when I do my sleeves I stitch um, in the round so I'm stitching on the wrong side because this is going to be flipped up I'm just gonna it's just gonna have a little form a little cuff this sleeve I will be showing some pictures at the end so you can see but that's just the way it's going to look and it's just going to be folded up and now I'm at the bottom and you can see I've got that string in there so that's I'm keeping that out of the way using that same stitch this applique stitch and it'll be going all the way around the bottom of this and here we're to those knots and I'm just pushing those out of the way as I continue to sew And that's what it looks like and we are almost done I just have that button to sew on and you just form it over that loop like that and I told you this was a simple one but sometimes those are the best I hope you enjoyed this everybody here's some pictures at the end have a great week bye for now